Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in today's video, I'm actually going to go over something a little bit different. Uh, this is actually my gear bag that I carry when I'm riding my one wheel. So I'm gonna start with the bag, kind of go over the uh, features of that, uh, talk a little bit about my helmet, my lights, and we'll dive into the bag and kind of go over what uh, what's the gear that I carry. So the bag itself is made by a company called uh, Peak Design. So you can see their uh, logo right here. Okay, and Peak Design is based out of the Bay Area in California. Uh, it started off as a Kickstarter project and actually I think became the most or one of the most successful uh, crowd uh, funded products on Kickstarter. So this is their uh, version one uh, 10 liter bag. Uh, comes in a variety of colors. I have the black as you can see here. And I just bought this for the fact that it's really well made, you know, high um, uh, YKK uh, zippers. Uh, this is pretty high water resistance. I don't know the exact rating, but uh, you know, it's meant to uh, be relatively weather resistant and it's easy to clean. Made out of this really nice like canvas like material, which is, uh, you know, not leather and it's, um, you know, again, wa relatively water resistant and abrasive resistant as well. And with Peak Design, what I like about them is they have really great design a lot of ingenuity and their products are just uh, really, really well made and very good uh, customer service as well. These bags and every other bag from Peak Design is actually guaranteed for life. So for example, I had a zipper here that broke. It was my fault and uh, sent them an email. They didn't ask for any pictures, no questions. They just said, uh, yeah, we'll send you a replacement. And if you could send us the broken one, that would be, that would be great. So highly recommend them as well. So again, this is their 10 liter bag. Now on the outside of here, let's start there. I have this uh, hard shell sunglass case and this is by a company called One Tigress. Uh, bought this off of Amazon. And uh, it's just a hard shell. I use this because I keep uh, either my sunglasses or my uh, reading glasses in here. So that way when I'm done writing or I'm about to write, I can just switch it out with no worry of crushing um, what's inside. Sometimes if I'm riding, I take off my watch, especially if it's a more expensive watch, and this provides a little bit of protection for that as well. So this is great. Has some nice uh, strap options for length or horizontal, horizontal or vertical mounting, and uh, dual zippers here, which are really nice as well. Okay. And then, um, for the strap here that comes with the uh, Peak Design, I've went ahead and used uh, this uh, strap padding material just to add a little bit more comfort to my ride. And this is made by a company called uh, Hazard 4, which again, you can get off Amazon. And I'll put the list for all these products uh, in the description below. Okay, and here's another great feature for the Peak Design bag. It has this easy, um, uh, easy adjustable strap. So once you sling this over your shoulder, you just kind of lift up on this lock like that and then kind of pull it to adjust to make it tighter. And then to loosen it, you just again undo the lock and then pull it back the opposite way. So really easy one-handed operation. Okay, and then here on the outside, you can actually see uh, my helmet. Okay, and then the way I secure this is I have these two clips here. Uh, that I uh, put on my bag. These are made by Night Eyes. These are their S binders. So I just kind of unlock here and unlock here and then my helmet comes out. So for the helmet itself, this is what it looks like. This is what they call a uh, tactical helmet or a fast helmet, F-A-S-T. The reason why they call this fast is fast is the name of this railing system here that allows you to mount um, uh, different types of uh, tools. So in this case, I have a flashlight and uh, I wanted a head mounted flashlight. So that's kind of why I went for this. And I believe the brand is Logu, L-O-O-G-U. But again, check the uh, description below. Has some nice padding, has a circumference adjustable strap here in the back. Okay, and uh, nice breathe, uh, breathing ports here on the top. So for my light, I've went ahead and uh, I've gone over this in a previous video, but I'm using this Lux Pro XP 910. Has four adjustable modes that you can just easily select here with, this, with the dial. So there's no need to go through menu buttons, okay? 
And uh, this is about a thousand lumens, comes with a rechargeable battery here on the back. So when you are ready to charge, you just take out that battery and plug it into the USB, uh, micro USB cradle. And then attached to this Lux Pro, I forgot the brand of this. I think it's just a no brand, but this is a picket or this is a fast mounting um, adapter that's meant for flashlights. And I will put again the name of that in the description below. And you can kind of adjust these screws to angle the light on the helmet so you can make it go this way or that way. So, you know, really important and just to be kind of courteous too. So that way you do have just enough light in front of you, but not too much light that's going to be blinding pedestrians or uh, cars that are in front of you. So that's my setup for my headlight. And then here in the back, I've got my tail light here. Okay, and then this one is again micro USB uh, rechargeable, which is great. So you have that little port here in the back. And uh, this one, uh, again, forgot the brand name, so check the description below. But it has a few different modes here. So red flashing, white, white flashing, red and white, and then solid red, and then back to red flashing. I like to keep it on red flashing because it's... Uh, a brake light so I feel like it should be red and then the flashing just draws a little bit more attention to you than if you had this on solid red so I kind of put it there and it comes with this nice strap mount here in the back okay which allows you to kind of mount this either to your board or to your helmets anywhere that you can find somewhere with like a bar or a strap to wrap it around okay and so that's a look at my helmet <clears throat> oh, other things I wanted to mention too here for the uh, Logu helmet, it also has this mounting. I think this is called an NVG mount uh, here in the front. So if you have like a GoPro and you have the adapter that goes to the NVG, you can hook up your camera here as well. And this helmet also comes with another fast rail here on the right if you decide to run two different types of uh, tools. Okay, so I really just like a helmet that obviously is safe, but something that provides a little bit of utility and provides some modularity as well. Okay, so uh, let's get into the bag itself. Oh, for the uh, flashlight or the uh, sunglass case, this is what it looks like on the inside. So I just have my glasses there. Okay, so here you have this uh, small pocket here in the front for uh, peak design, which is great. And uh, the way this works is that uh, you have these compression straps here and here. So the more you pull these down, the more that this pouch in the front, which is about this wide, goes down. And then the more you loosen these, the more they come out. So at full looseness, you can see just how much room expands here, like all of this, right? And then let's take out the contents in here. So in here, when I'm not using them, I have my uh, gloves for writing. And my wrist guards, and that's pretty much it. And then this is what the inside looks like. You have this nice gold lining material, uh, which contrasts the black really well. Okay, and again, easy to close zippers, which are great with peak design, and they have these little fabric tabs or leather tabs that you can pull on. And then if here, if you look at that compartment, now it's time to kind of collapse uh, this area here, all that extra flap, so we just kind of pull on this and pull on this and now you can see it kind of cinches that down nice and neat. So we'll set these to the side here. And uh, the gloves here are no brand. These are just Illuminite gloves. Uh, usually I'll use uh, higher grade uh, gloves than this that have a little bit of abrasion resistance, uh, but I'm loaning them to my friend right now. So this is what I used last night. And then for my uh, wrist guards, I'm using this brand here, just the traditional rollerblade brand, stuff that we all know as kids, seems to be doing well, has um, fortunately not had a fall on them yet, just some uh, abrasions from moving them around, but uh, relatively easy to put on. I will say the only disadvantage of this is the Velcro is not that robust, so if you can see here, the uh, Velcro is um, already starting to fray a little bit right here between my two fingers. And so what I'm noticing is that this Velcro is getting less and less uh, um, sticky, so to speak, right? So I might wanna get a better brand later on. And these are only about a month old. So in terms of safety, they look like they do the job, but these straps could use a little bit of work. 
Okay, uh, going further to my bag, so now we go into the main pocket here. Again, with these easy pull tabs from Peak Design, so if you're wearing gloves while riding, relatively easy to pull apart. Nice smooth zipper, so you have this gold lining here again. Okay, and then um, inside here I have my power cord for my, um, for my charger for the one wheel. I also want to show you this inside the Peak Design bag. You have these two pockets here, so zoom in here. You have pockets here, and they're kind of color labeled uh, black and red, and then black, and then red again. And the whole idea of this is, uh, you know, Peak Design was also was founded originally as a bag designer for uh, cameramen, so and and camera women. So what happens here is like this is meant for memory cards, and that way, if a memory card is full, you can move it from you know black to red or red to black. It provides a little bit of labeling, but if you're going to be you know filming or taking pictures, just nice to know that you have some places of organization here for all your gear or maybe even just your earbuds while you're riding. Okay, so I got my power cord in there. And then of course inside here, there we go, I think that's better. Okay, then inside here I have my charger, so that goes to one side, and then I have my pump. So. If I am, you know, about to ride and let's say I just need to top it off or uh, if I have a flat and I, I need to repair it and reinflate the tire, I have this nice foot pump. Uh, this is made um, by, there we go. That's the uh, company name right there, Hopro. Okay, and this is their foot pump. So there is no CO2 needed and I keep a little tire gauge in here that I got from my uh, tire shop, okay. And the way this works is uh, you basically undo it right here and you unravel it. Okay, put this uh, foot holster to the left and then you're gonna uh, have this pump here. Now this provides both a Schrader on the top and Presta on the bottom. So we're using Schrader for the one wheel. And then once you got this hooked up, you support with one foot here and then you pump with the other foot here. It's kind of like this. All right, so really just nice to have a pump accessible while you're riding, something that's portable and also something that doesn't have to rely on CO2 uh, just in case you um, you run out of CO2. And then also if you're riding with a group, uh, you know, if you're out of CO2, then you can always just kind of have an unlimited supply and just, you know, help out a friend. So that's uh, the pump that I use. Oh, forgot the compression strap. So we'll put that back in there later. Okay, now let's go inside here. So here are my headphones. Okay, and these are really old. You can kind of see I've had to duct tape them already on the back, but I got to tell you, these are so far my favorite. Only criticism I have is the battery life, but these are the Logitech S11 Flex HD. So flex, meaning that they're relatively flexible. You can see here that I flexed it too much and kind of broke it, but the wiring is okay. So it's just the plastic that broke, so it still works. And what I like about this is I'm a big fan of riding with um, headphones, uh, obviously only in one ear, so I leave one ear open so I can hear the environment, but something that wraps around my head or my neck. And the reason being, you know, while you're riding your one wheel, um, you know, you might hit a bump in a road and the headphone might jostle out of your ear. And so it'd be nice to not have a headphone fall out and then you have to kind of stop your ride, go back and pick it up. The other thing I like about this is that it has controls. So we have the volume controls here on the, uh, zoom in a little bit, you get the volume controls here on the right side, power here, and then you have the track uh, play, pause, uh, track forward and track backward button here on the bottom. And because these are wrapped around my head or my neck, every time I push that button with my thick gloves, I don't have to worry about this headphone falling to the floor. If it comes out of my ear, it's just on my neck. So really nice. And these are relatively water resistant. I think the IPX rating is IPX5, but again, these are about three or four years old. So they might even have a better version out of these. All right, so Logitech Flex 11 HDs and with a Bluetooth connection. And call quality too is really good on this as well. Uh, battery hour, I think is about five hours of continuous play. Nothing great by today's standards, but you know, four or five years ago, that was kind of average, so. Okay, we'll put those to the side here. And then 
I'll show you the rest of the inside of this bag. So you got this big pocket here, and then here's for your laptop or tablet, which is what they mean uh, met this uh, compartment for. Okay, so just a beautifully designed bag. All right, so the bag is done. We can set that to the side. And these are my tools that I kind of carry with me. So, inside here, I just kind of keep it in this generic mesh bag. The, one of the first things I carry is a uh, padlock of sorts. So, uh, this is what I originally used when I had a snowboard. So, that's the brand. And the way this works is you have your combination here at the top. Okay, and then once the uh, combo is unlocked, you can kind of have this little stretch cord here. Right, so it stretches pretty far. I don't know the exact amount, but I think it's about two feet. And then you can kind of wrap it back around like your po a post or a table and then put your board. So usually what I'll do is I'll wrap this in between the frame of the one wheel and the tire, wrap it around the, the leg of a, of a table, and then kind of bring it back, click it in, switch out your padlock, and then it can't be pulled out. When you're ready, put your padlock in, push this button to the right, and it releases and it has a retraction here to kind of keep it close. And it's nice and small, so nothing too bulky. There probably are more robust padlocks out there, so I would not get in the habit, just my two cents of like padlocking your one wheel and then going out for a long time. Because you never know, somebody, if they really want to get into any kind of padlock, I feel that they could. But for me, you know, if I go to a Starbucks, um, sometimes I'll have to use the bathroom. It's kind of a pain to have to carry my board, especially if it's charging. So what I'll do is I'll just wrap this around like one of those permanent leg, uh, permanent uh, table posts that is like, you know, bolted to the floor. Go to the bathroom, you know, takes me a couple minutes, come back, and, you know, at least this provides some deterrent for anybody that might be thinking about stealing, and it just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable as well. Okay, so that's my lock. Um, this is my tire bag. So this was uh, something I covered in a previous video. So um, look for my video on how to keep your pant leg clean while carrying your one wheel because sometimes when you carry it to the side, uh, you can have the tire rub up against your legs and that gets dirty. So this is something I just wrap the tire in, but uh, I'd encourage you to watch that video to show you how I do that. So this is nice and compact as well. Okay, and then carry some tools. So this is my Maxpedition hard use gear uh, pack. Maxpedition, another fantastic company that makes really quality, um, you know, high endurance gear. So in here, I just carry a few things. Um, I carry my Leatherman Surge. So it just has some pliers, some scissors on there, screwdrivers. Um, the thing that I find most useful here are the pliers to pull out any, you know, possible nails or screws or glass, especially that might be dangerous to pull out with your fingers. And then there is this, uh, uh, quarter bit driver using the proprietary, um, half bits by Leatherman. And then I carry this bit set by, again, by Leatherman here. So that way I have every access, no matter what size of fastener on my board, I can have it covered with this. So this is great. The only downside to this is um, it has a blade on it, so you cannot travel with this, obviously, unless you decide to kind of take apart this type of Leatherman and uh, remove the blades. So that's kind of what I carry in there. All right. And then in terms of uh, covering flats, this is kind of my flat kit and then also my, um, you know, my medical kit, so to speak, just basic stuff. So again, uh, this is by, um, actually this is a no brand uh, pouch I got off of AliExpress. Definitely not as good quality as the Maxpedition, but because it's within a bag, within a bag, I didn't really care about it, you know, getting too broken up, but it does the job. So in here, I will keep a small uh, first aid kit like this. So it just has some Band-Aids, some Neosporin. Uh, I need to replace in here, but I had some uh, gauze and, you know, just some medication, um, you know, basic stuff like Tylenol. And then um, inside here, I have the Slime Flat Repair Kit. So this is usually sold in a green box by Slime that's much bigger, but to save on space, I took it out. And uh, this is everything they provide to you um, inside of the kit. So you have like 
these two tools, you can review the slime tire patch kit to know how to use these exactly. Uh, one of these is sharp. This is the reamer, so I just put this on a cork so it doesn't poke my bag. And then these are the tire plugs themselves that you will use to seal up you know, the, the, the puncture site. And then lastly inside here, uh, just some duct tape. Never know, right? Uh, this is just um, a thin portable piece of duct tape, so five yards. So, you know, quite a good amount, small profile, which is great. Duct tape, you know, you can use that for anything. If you really have like a really bad cut, it's not the first thing I would go to, but if you're in a pinch and there's nothing else to go to, duct tape. Something falls off your board, your headlight can't stay up on your helmet, you just need something temporary and adhesive and, um, you know, modular that can kind of adapt and stick to things, duct tape. Strap breaks on my uh, Peak Design bag, which I don't think would happen, but if it did, duct tape. So I always just carry a little bit of duct tape wherever I go. I can't have enough of this. So yeah, and that's pretty much everything I carry. The only other thing I'd say is I occasionally have a watch. Now, I don't personally recommend wearing an expensive watch while one wheeling for obvious reasons. Uh, for me, I have this cheap $15 Casio. Uh, I modify watches, so I'll buy these broken off of eBay, kind of fix them up myself for like, you know, five or 10 bucks. Because for me, I, I like to have something on my wrist to be able to tell the time without having to pull out my phone. Um, the good thing also about these Casios is that their straps are pretty long, so even while wearing um, uh, my wrist guards and my gloves, this can go completely over the wrist guard but underneath the glove and uh, still be strapped over. Okay, might be a little bit different if you have a, a bigger circumference size wrist. Okay, and then besides this, the only thing I really carry is just my cell phone uh, in, a, in a case, um, but that's pretty much it, you know, just the bare minimum to take care of my one wheel needs. Um, again, when you're packing or you're trying to figure out your gear, I think, you know, a few good principles to follow is, you know, number one, make sure that you are protecting yourself, first of all. So make sure you have good safety gear for your head, for your wrists. Some of you guys use knee pads and elbow pads or uh, elbow, yeah, elbow pads and knee pads. I know everyone has their, it's kind of a hot button issue to talk about safety, but you know, for me, you, you, you're always going to lose when you hit the ground and uh, hopefully none of you fall, but if you do, it's good to have a little bit of insurance. And then secondly, safety for your board. So, you know, if you're in a pinch, especially if you're going on a long ride, some of you guys have those XRs uh, that go, you know, a good 18 miles out, maybe even more. Um, even if you're halfway, nine or 10 miles out and you get a flat, it would, you know, really suck to have to carry your board all the way back. So just a little something that can kind of keep you going, um, you know, on most rides. And then for power, so if you're like me, I have a plus with a 2X system. So um, I haven't been able to get 18 miles. I'm just uh, a little shy of that. But if I decide to go on a longer ride, I can kind of carry the charger with me for extra Oh, and uh, one other thing I forgot to mention uh, is the water bottle that I carry. So um, this is made by Monument. Got this off of Amazon. Um, for me, it's just always a good idea to have water for obvious reasons, but also just for some things you might not think about. Like, you know, if you have a cut and your water is clean, then you can go ahead and kind of like, you know, flush out uh, the cut a little bit before you dress it up. And uh, this water bottle is kind of nice because it's light. It's actually meant for both heat and liquid. So this can take um, pretty high temperatures. It's even okay to put uh, hot coffee in this. You'll have to check the uh, listing uh, below for the exact uh, degree range. But when you're done with this, uh, what's nice is it folds up. So I don't really use this feature too much, but maybe if I'm about to take a flight and I don't necessarily need to use my water bottle on the flight, it makes this easier to pack. So you kind of bring this collar up, you kind of roll the bottle from the bottom, then you close the top back, has this lock here on the top, and then it has this strap on the back that kind of wraps around and then adheres to that little uh, tongue over there. Which is great. And then when you're ready to use it, you just kind of take that off, unwrap the bottle, open up the uh, top here, and it opens. And then for me, uh, I always like to have water bottles where the place that you put your mouth around is covered. Just for obvious reasons, you go to a cafe, you set your bag down, you don't have to worry about that, you know, spout touching the floor, you're going on a ride that's dirty, this top is going to keep it nice and clean. So just a little bit more hygienic. 
and then you kind of pull the collar down. The collar also doubles as a um, hold for your hand if you're putting hot liquids in here as well. So that way it doesn't burn you. Okay, and then let me go ahead and actually show you what everything looks like um, if I'm not riding, but I'm just kind of carrying it. So I'll leave my helmet on there too. So this water bottle, I just kind of clip it over here to one of these uh, these uh, Night Eyes uh, S binders here in the back. Okay. All right, so here we are. This is what the bag looks like. I'll just kind of sling this over my shoulder. Kind of like that. And then here's that draw lock I was telling you about. Look how easy this is. I have all this slack, right, that I want to get rid of. So what I do is I just kind of lift up a little bit on that lock. So lift it up like that. And then kind of pull this down. And then pull it down even further. Lock it back up here. And now you can see just how cinched that bag is on my back. you know, just a little bit easier to carry. All right, guys, so that'll do it for uh, today. Oh, let me go ahead and undo it. So to undo it, I just kind of lift up and everything's done one-handed here. And then just uh, kind of set the bag down, just like that. So one more look at my uh, gear that I carry. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.